some time ago, I did a review of the Sofren IF23 flashlight. Because of the versatility and functionality of this light, it quickly became one of my favorites. In fact, this light resides on my desk next to my computer for easy access. Well, now Sofren has come out with a new light, the IF24. This light boasts some improvements over the IF23 that may actually cause it to be my new favorite. If you're interested in hearing what that's all about, keep watching. Just before we get started, I do want to thank Sofren for sending out the IF24 so that I can share it with you. Yes, there are some significant improvements with this light over the IF23, and that's what we're going to take a look at. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop where I'll share with you the key features, the physical and performance specifications before we get outside and do some demonstrations. All right, let's get started. Just before we focus in on the light itself, let me share with you what it came with. This is the box the light came in, picture of the IF24 on the outside. The box is a two-piece affair. The inner box contains the following, the all-important manual with warranty information, a USB Type-C charging cable, but unusual for flashlights these days. This is a meter in length, a little longer than normal. Nice to have that extra length occasionally. And the last thing inside of the box is a small bag that contains a lanyard and a pair of spare O-rings. Now, also, the light does come with a fixed, or a removable, I should say, pocket clip there, and a 3000 milliamp 18650 battery, which is branded by Sofren. Let's put that away. Now, as far as key features for this light goes, the things that make this one stand out as being so much more improved over the eye of 23 is this feature a rotary mode selector button. It allows you to choose not only the main light, the side light, and the RGB light, but also has a physical lockout on it. So it is engaged right now, so you cannot turn the light on and off. That is no small thing. The uh, IF, or IF23 does have the ability to switch between all those different features, but you have to do so through a series of button presses to get there. So that is a huge thing. And of course, like the IF23, it does come with the side panel, which provides a white light, a red light, and a multicolor changing light, which we'll get to in a few moments' time. Now, as far as the physical specifications go for this, I'm going to go through them quickly, but of course they will be in the video description as well. It is equipped with an SST40 LED, rated between 6,000 and 6,500 on the Kelvin. And as you'll see when we get it outside, it's quite a white, clear, almost bluish light. Overall length, 4.96 inches or 126 millimeters diameter at its narrowest meaning across the basal it is 0.96 inches or 24.5 millimeters but at its thickest through here it is 1.08 inches or 27.5 millimeters weight with the battery in of course 5.7 ounces 147 grams it has a dustproof, waterproof rating of IP66, and it has an impact rating of one meter. Now, as far as the performance specifications for this light go, because it has two lights, primary and secondary, both in white, I'll go through them both, but I'll do so quickly. I'll tell you now, they have the same settings, both for the primary and secondary, the only difference being the lumens for each. So starting with the primary light, it has a moonlight of one lumen lasting 20 days, a low of 10 lumens lasting 115 hours, a medium of 150 lumens lasting 13.5 hours, a high of 700 lumens lasting 2.25 hours, and a turbo of 2,000 lumens lasting 1.5 hours. It does have strobe, 2,000 lumens, SOS, 150 lumens, and a beacon of 2,000 lumens. Now, the side light has all the same Types of light settings, moonlight low, medium high, turbo, SO, strobe, SOS, and beacon. It's just the lumen settings that change. And for your easy reference, that'll all be in the video description below. All right, as far as the operation of the IF24 goes, we're going to start by focusing in on the mode selector. So right now, if you look at the light of the mode selector, you should be able to see that there is a small padlock icon where the arrow was pointed at the top, indicating that the light is physically locked out. So no matter press the button and nothing happens. But when I turn the rotary mode switch one quarter turn to the left, then I engage the primary or main light. Let me just turn that off. Now, running through the lumen settings to turn it on a moonlight, it's a long press. And there we are on moonlight, turn it off again. If I want to access, go directly to turbo, it's a double press. 
and I can turn it off again. Now, if I just quick press the light, the light will come on with a memory to whatever the last lumen setting was. And if I want to rotate or move up and down through the lumen settings, it's just press and hold. Low, medium, and high, and back to low, and turn it off again. So there it goes, memory for the last lumen setting. Now I'm going to go directly to turbo again. And with when I'm in turbo, if I double press, it'll go to strobe. Double press again, and it goes to SOS. If I double press again, it goes to beacon. Press it again, and of course the light goes off. And it's exactly the same functionality for the side light. So now if I want to access the white light, I can rotate the button again. Now I think it goes to red first, as you'll see. There, it goes to red. I'll come back to that in a minute. And I just rotate it all the way around. And now we're on the white side light. So you can see this is a great feature on this light. It's a the functionality, of course, is as a work light, an area type of a floodlight. I'm trying not to be too bright on the camera right now. So I can run through the same sequence of presses on the on off switch to go through the different lumen settings for that. Now let me just rotate it back to red light. So you can go directly to red light, which is nice for those who want that and use it to preserve their night vision. You have red light right there. But if I want to go through the different RGB red, green, blue uh, combinations, then it's all by double tap. So I double tap. And you can see the light has now gone into a red flash. If I double tap again, it goes into what they call police mode, kind of like the lights on top of a police car. Double tap again, and it'll go into a color changing mode. Double tap again. I call this the Cylon mode for lack of a better term. Double tap again. It's referred to as waterfalls. Double tap again, and back to light changing mode, and I can turn it off. One more time, I'm back to the red. Now, if I press and hold the red, the red actually will change color. So you can end up with any specific color you want, and then you can leave it there. And the light's off again, and it comes back on at that same color. So it has memory for whatever it was you were losing, using last. All right, just before we get outside and do some demonstrations with the Sofrin IF24, I thought I'd bring in the IF23 so we can do some comparisons between the similarities and differences in these two lights. So to start with, the similarities. Well, they both have a very same form factor in terms of they both have the primary light on the end and the side panel light as well. And if I rotate the light over, you can see they look almost identical one to the other. The most significant difference between the two of them is the size itself with the IF20 being considerably larger and heavier. And of course, that's the result of having the 21700 lithium ion battery install, whereas the IF24 has a slightly smaller 18650 battery install. The other differences are, of course, the IF24 has the rotary mode selector switch. That's no small thing. I really like that as well. It's You can reach the same functions with the IF23. You just have to do so through a sequence of button presses. The other difference, not quite apparent until you get them outside is the fact that they have different reflectors inside the, the um, primary light. So the older IF23 is what they call orange peel reflector and this is more of a floodlight as you'll see when we get them outside we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison whereas the IF24 is a deeper polished reflector lending itself more to a spotlight. All right those are the similarity and differences between the two lights. Let us get outside and compare them. All right, the Sofren IF24 on medium. Not a lot of light here, but once again, as you can see, there is a central hotspot, some flood around the outside, but it merges quite nicely. My shed over there in the distance, some 60 feet away, cast into the neighbor's backyard, but not all that far. Let's take it up a notch. High. Well, that's actually a lot of light. Significant difference between medium and high and turbo. What a versatile light with all of this lumens and then all those other settings to go with it. Some closing thoughts for the Sofren IF24. What do I really like? Certainly it has to be the rotary mode selector. That has to be the most significant improvement over the earlier IF23. The IF23 is functional. You just have to memorize the buttons sequence in order to get to the mode that you're looking for. The IF24, 
it's much easier to do so. The other thing I like is the carryover between the two lights in terms of their form factor. This, like the IF23, falls into my hand in such a natural way that it's always going to be indexed so that my thumb falls on top of the on off button. It really can't help but do so because of its shape. That's no small thing either. Now, when we got to the side, as far as the performance goes, you could see that the tighter, more concentrated spotlight of the IF24 in comparison to the more floodlight of the IF23. IF24 was also a colder, whiter light, whereas the IF23 leaned towards the warmer, yellowish light. So those were the most significant differences between the two of them. Now, there is one thing that about the IF23 I think I like, and that is the larger battery. That means longer run times as well. Now, having said that, this really is a bit too big for pocket carry unless you have a specific need for a light that size. So the IF24 is a little bit easier to carry in your pocket if this is the type of light you would like to EDC or carry every day. All right, so that's a comparison between the two lights. The IF24 is definitely worth taking a look at. What I'll be doing is putting all the specifications as well as the links to this light in the video description for you to take another look at, but I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on this light. If you have any thoughts, positive or negative for that matter, then please put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.